What is going on, everyone? Welcome to 24 7 Football. And we have the championship starting very soon. And it is only right that we talk about where we think the championship title race will be going, who we think will gain promotion, and who we think will face the dreaded drop. So we're going to be talking through the remaining championship fixtures with Jack Towers, who is a Leeds fan. He's hoping that they don't bottle it again. Uh, that's the only time I'll say that one, Jack. Um, and yeah, we'll just be talking about the championship returning and where we think the remaining places will be up for grabs. Because there's only a few teams left now, Jack, that have actually got anything to fight for, um, which isn't usually said in the championship. So we'll start with relegation. Um, relegation was really a, bi a, big, a big talking point during the Christmas time. In the championship, I mean, Wigan looked dead and buried, and then they mm. went on a, such a, a massive run. And now the twentieth, they seem to be um, clawing their way out. They had that momentum, but yeah. now we've had this big break. Momentum goes out the window. So, where are you um, predicting those three relegation spots will go to? Yeah, I've just got the table back up again. Now it's it's an interesting one, really. The, I mean, the, it, I, I wrote a piece about this this week, and it's you know, the relegation can come from anywhere, just like the promotion can come from anywhere. And you think with nine games to go, it probably goes up to about 17th spot at the minute where Stoke and Huddersfield are both uh, are both three points adrift of the drop. Um, I think for me, it's just, I've, I've always said since since January, as soon as, as, soon as Hull, Hull sold Jared Bowen and uh, Cameron Grzyski, that, Awful they were, business. that they were going to be in trouble. And the, the interesting thing with that is, is that, they were in for quite a stable season and they weren't far off the playoffs. They weren't going to challenge for the playoffs, but they weren't far off the playoffs. And um, they just took a huge gamble and said, we're stable enough. Let's cash in on Bowen and Grzyski and we'll, we'll go again next year. And it's absolutely, it's gone, well, it's gone the other way, hasn't it? And they're, they're, they're very close to being relegated. I don't think they've got a win in 2020. And I just don't really know where the other win is, is coming from for them. Uh, one one team that looks like certain to go down Barnsley. Um, well, they've got to have a really good bounce of form now, and it always seems like because we've seen Rotherham come up, those two always yo-yo in yeah. between the two divisions, either Rotherham or Barnsley. Um, so Barnsley look pretty dead and buried. Do you give them any chance I, I to don't escape give, that drop? I don't give them a lot of chance. I think that it, it, it is a bit of a shame for them, really, because. They just had that bad of a start to the season that it's kind of biting them in the backside a bit now. Um, you know, the manager they appointed, I can't remember his name now, the manager they appointed back in, um, was it October? That he, He's not even had that bad of a run with them since he's been in charge. Um, I think the form they've been in under the new manager might have actually kept, kept them clear of relegation, was it from the start of the season? Um, but they didn't really win a game before he was appointed, and it, it, again, I think I think for that reason, I, I, I probably see them going down. Um, and similarly with Luton, I think just all of the, all of this season, I just for me, I just think Luton have been a bit out of their depth, and I, I, I see them going down the drop as well. Uh, the thing is, though, with obviously with um, Luton, they've got a change of management, and um, you see Nathan Jones going back to Luton. And he really got Luton ticking before he went to Stoke, where it didn't quite work out for him. But as we're seeing with Stoke, is it more how the club's being run rather than the manager who was in there at the time? But um, So he's back at Luton, new manager. He's had a lot of time now to work with those mm. players, Jack. Could that maybe flip it on its head? I did have a brief thought when I was doing my when I've done this prediction this week. On my the brief thought that I had were, could Hull and Charlton seriously be that bad that Luton could maybe sneak out of it? And it could be possible. They're six points adrift, but similarly with Charlton, I don't know where they're going to get a win from because even with Lyle Taylor's goals, they're currently in the relegation zone. They're now not going to have Lyle Taylor's goals, and I think a couple of other exactly. players, I think a couple of other players that um, they're going to be without as well. Hull and Charlton, I just don't know where the results are going to come from with them. And if Luton can get a couple of wins together, it absolutely is possible that they could survive it. Um, the prediction I went with was that Luton and Barnsley would go down along with Hull. Um, but when you really dissect it, 
Luton do have a chance. I think they do have a chance, especially with how bad a situation I think Charlton and Hull are in. Um, you spoke about Huddersfield and Stoke. You'd probably say since the turn of the year, um, two management changes as well. The Cowley brothers, for me, fantastic managers. And should Huddersfield stay up, I think next season we could be looking at Huddersfield going up um, on the flip side just because of how good those two are, especially Danny Cowley as well. Um, And they've really turned around Huddersfield's fortunes. And Michael O'Neill at Stoke has done the same, really. But Michael O'Neill's tested positive for coronavirus all wishing uh, uh, the, the quickest and safest recovery possible, but he's not going to be there for Stoke. Is that going to factor into the relegation race in terms of they haven't got their manager in the, in for the next few weeks? It, it, yeah, it could do. It's it's an interesting one that I think it's 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 just it's strange with Stoke because they shouldn't be anywhere near where they are. They haven't got the, I don't think they've got the best team. They're not anywhere near the best team in the championship, but they should be pushing the top half of that division. Um, similarly with Huddersfield, I think they're certainly a mid-table to top half of the championship team. I, I, they should be doing better than that, what they are. But I'm not sure. I, I think they'll have enough. I think they will have enough to escape it. Um, and for me, in your opinion as well, just before we move on, what's gone wrong at Middlesbrough? Because players and lack of transfers definitely hasn't been the issue. Middlesbrough is another interesting one because similarly with Hull, they took a little bit of a gamble in that they appointed Woodgate as manager. And I don't think anyone at Middlesbrough expected Woodgate to have them mounting a promotion challenge this year. But they took the, they've spent, they're a team that spent an awful lot of money over the last few years. And they've got a very ageing squad. They've got players in that team that a few years ago you were talking as the the best players in this division. They're not anymore. Um, you know, the likes of Adam Clayton, Johnny Howson, Asomba Longa, George Friend, these are all players that were the top players in this league and they're not anymore. Um, and they took a gamble with Woodgate to sort of hopefully just have a bit of a stable mid-table season. And I think they've been pulled into a little bit more of a dogfight than they were expecting. So, finally, just your predictions. I think I'm going to go for... I'm going to back... Luton to get out. I'm going to go Barnsley, Charlton and Hull to go down. I, I, I'd like to see Luton stay up. I, I, I would because I think they've had... Um, it's been a great story with them. They've had a huge rise, a huge fall and a, another huge rise again. Um, it'd be a shame if they went down. And I, I, my initial prediction was Barnsley, Luton and Hull. I'm inclined to say... I'm inclined to agree with you now that Hull and Charlton might go down because I just... I, I really don't know where they're results are going to come from you could argue that with Luton as well but if they get a couple of results I do I think they could maybe maybe squeeze out um, so we'll move on to the playoffs then Jack um, the the playoffs in the championship notoriously difficult to call because the championship I'd say is probably one of the hardest leagues in the world just because everyone beats everyone currently you've got Fulham in third um, six points behind second, which is West Brom. Brentford in fourth on 60 points. Nottingham Forest um, fifth on 60 points. And sixth are Preston, 56 points. Um, you probably say Fulham, you know, a nine-point swing, very unlikely. They've got a bit of, quite a lot of quality in that squad. Preston, such a strange team for me in that playoff spot. I mean... We'll start with Preston. Do you think they've got enough to stay in the playoffs? Because they're so up and down. I think the important thing with Preston to realise is that Alex Neil's done a, a fantastic job with them. Uh, oh, he has. Um, I don't believe they're a team that, on paper, you're talking of as a as a playoff team. There's some very there's some good players in that team. I, I, the the teams around them, the squads that are around them, I don't think. I just think we're a lot bigger and better than Preston, which shows what a good job that Alex Neal has done. And if he gets Preston anywhere near the playoffs, they are currently in the playoffs. If they finish anywhere near the playoffs or even in the playoffs, he's done an absolutely unbelievable job with them. Uh, with uh, Nottingham Forest, another team that's capable of thumping Leeds <laughs> and then capable of losing at home to Millwall. I mean, yeah, such, a, such an up-and-down team again. But they've got a they've got a five point cushion. Do yeah. you think they've got enough to stay in the playoffs? 
I, yeah, firstly, I, don't, I don't think Mill should not be um, should be under should not be underestimated because Gary Rowett's got them playing some really good stuff um, away from the typical sort of Millwall side you would uh, you would associate with. But Forest Forest are a counter attack inside. Um, Lamucci has done a fantastic job with them, but they they do rely heavily on counter attack inside, which is why they've got. You know they've done the double over Brentford this season. For for instance, Brentford are obviously a heavily possession based uh, football inside. Same with us. They've uh, drawn and drawn with us at home and um, beaten us at their place. Um, purely because they're so good at a counter attacking, probably the best in the league at counter attacking. Um, so they when it they come up against teams that sit back, they don't. They just don't tend to do as well, which is why they come up with these obscure results. Uh, Brentford, team you just mentioned, possession-based. I like Brentford as a football club just because of the story that they go off and their scouting system is absolutely spot on. Incredible. They're fourth at the moment. They've been in and around the playoffs looking at promotion for the last few seasons. Do you think that this is their year? My my prediction that I done in the piece that I wrote this week was that they would that was that they would win the playoffs. Um I, I think on their day, they, they comfortably beat every team in the league. I think they've got a fantastic group of players, probably the best front three attacking trio in, in, in the division, um, in Ben Rama, Watkins and... Um, uh, I can't remember his name now. Um, but the um, but they score a lot of goals. Again, been quite inconsistent. But I think when they're on their day, they would have got... If they're on their day a lot more than they have been this year... They would have, they would be comfortably in the top two for me, and for that reason, if they if they come out with that in the playoffs, then in my opinion, they win it. Uh, Fulham, strong squad, um, rely heavily on Mitrovic. Um, they've got a nine point swing, so you'd probably comfortably say that they'll be in the playoffs. But what do you think about Fulham as a team in the Championship? Because again, they've got it in them to have a potential slip up. For me, they've just not got the right man in charge. I think Scott Parker may have potential as a manager. I just I don't think he was the right man for this job this season. Um, I think they should be running away with the championship, if I'm being honest, with the players that they've got. Um, you're absolutely right in saying they're going to get the playoffs. They're the best challengers for us and West Brom, in my opinion. Um, but we're not forgetting that, that they're the big first game back against Brentford next um, next Saturday. Um, you know, their game against Brentford is going to be absolutely crucial. Um, if Brentford get a result there, they're probably a little bit back in the mix. If Fulham get a result, it puts a lot of pressure on us and West Brom. So, outside of the playoffs then, you've got Bristol City, Millwall, Cardiff. You'd probably say Swansea, Blackburn, Derby maybe a little bit of a push, but, you know, with the game still to play, they've still got a chance. Um who could you see sneaking into the playoffs outside of those? Because you mentioned Millwall. Um, and as we know, Bristol City, I've got a good squad as well. So who who would you um, bank on to maybe sneak in? Yeah, yeah I mean, this is where the championship is just so annoying, isn't it? Because you can make predictions from anywhere. Um, yeah, Derby and Swansea are, are out of it now for me. Just, yeah, been too inconsistent. Blackburn have been in and around the playoffs for a while, but never amounted a place in there. Cardiff, Cardiff have been better under Neil Harris. It is between Bristol City and Millwall for me, and I just think I, I predicted Millwall to to get that sixth spot because I, I I've been really impressed with them under Gary Rowett. Um, I think it's just five games lost in twenty three league games under him, which is playoff form, um, and he's he, he's changed them from a, a a long ball side playing very unattractive football to to the football they're now playing, which is keeping it on the deck and actually being quite a decent side to watch at times and, you know, getting the results they have done, such as against Forest, I, I think they're not going to be a nice team to play and I think they might get the sixth spot. Um, Premier League next season, if there were fans and Millwall and Leeds went up in the same season, that would be incredibly tasty next year, Jack. I, I tell um, you what, they're not going to be a nice team to play in the playoff semi-final if they get there. No one's going to want to go to the Den on a Tuesday night for a semi-final. Absolutely not. Um, so, are you going Brentford then to go up via the playoffs? Any, yeah. Any, again, this is, 
it's a it's a it's an impossible prediction to make because third, fourth, fifth, sixth, any of them are capable of winning the playoffs. Whoever gets it, it's whoever's better on their day in the playoffs. Um, but the absolute best on their day for me is Brentford, which is why I I, I pit them to get it. I mean. I think Nottingham Forest, like you say, got a shout just because they play well against the bigger teams, which is what the playoffs obviously obviously are. So I think Nottingham Forest are going to be one to um, really consider. So moving on to the top two then, we've got Leeds and we've got West Brom. Leeds notoriously um, been in this situation quite a few times, Jack. But I've got to say this season seemed a lot more streamlined compared to previous seasons where you've just fallen out of the around maybe January, or you've gone on a poor run, which is what Leeds haven't done this season. So do you think it is finally Leeds' time to go up? Yes. <laughs> go on, touch the wood. <laughs> the, uh, I, 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 think it, it, I think it was just interesting this season, because last season when we've gone on bad runs, we came out of the top two. We were sort of going in and out of the top two when we were up and down in form. But this season, even when we have had a bit of a a down in form we have still we've still stayed in the top two um you know we've been very lucky in the sense that when we have slipped up other teams have tended to slip up as well um you know back in De- uh, december was it i think we or december or january when we lost to lost away to nottingham forest 2-0 i thought yep yeah, this is it it's going to happen again um then we got a result against brentford drew 1-1 and then we haven't we haven't lost since we've won every game on the bounce and and not conceded a goal in the process, um, but who knows what's going to happen in these last nine games because form's out the window now, um, and anything can happen. Anyone's going to be anyone now in these last nine games. We could steamroll it or we can do the typical Leeds and win with the last kick of the season. Do you think losing um, the home advantage at Ellen Road in terms of the fans will be a big factor for Leeds? I, I I made a joke about this a, a while back in the sense that I think no fans in the stadium might actually favour us because uh, we tend to the fans t- uh, the fans do do get on your back when you're not doing well but they also are very much behind you when you are doing well um, but I think there has been signs in the past that the Leeds players have crumbled under the pressure at Ellen Road um, but. I think all in all, it, 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 I think all in all, it will hinder them a little bit, um, especially away from home. You know, when Leeds fans travel away from home and they can create a home atmosphere away from home, it will make a huge difference. Where do you rate West Brom's squad in terms of the championship? Because they've got a, on paper, they've got a ridiculously good squad going forward, and added to their ranks, you know, Desan Grisicki from Hull, they look very complete. So, where do you rate that West Brom squad? Yeah, because Ricky was a smart signing for them, and he's done he's done very well. Um, they've lost the least amount of games in the league. Um, it, it's yeah, I mean them and Fulham, I rate as the two best squads in the league. Um, but yeah, it has been a bit too. It has it's been inconsistent for them. They obviously they lost at home to Wigan, like we did. Um, I, I, yeah, I think they've got enough. Like us, I think they've got more than enough to um to, to beat the rest and I, it's 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 got to be us and us and West Brom for me. All know. right. So final two then. So you're going um Leeds and West Brom. For me I don't think you can look past you two either. Um West Brom very good. Leeds have been so consistent. So those are our predictions. Um let us know what you think in the comments below of what will happen when the championship returns. Jack, how excited are you for the championship to return? Terrified, old boy. <laughs> I'd be yeah, terrified I'd be as well. Back. I'd be terrified as well, to be fair. Um, so let us know in the comments below what you think will happen in the championship. Not long to go now. Um, we'll be doing a load of stuff when the championship is back, as well as other footballing events as well. So um, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Uh, like the video. Check out our website, 247football.com, for the latest news and transfer rumours and match previews, little bits like that as well. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks for Jack for coming on, and we'll see you next time.